In this video, we're going to be checking out something different this time that doesn't involve anything to do with guild jobs, sealed ruins excavation, or tracking down wanted monsters. Well, it does involve monsters, but you'll see what I mean soon enough, so let's take a look. In a past video, I may have mentioned before that there is another other place that you can check out uh, that's in, that's in the, the country of Forlaz that's known as Mother Claire's Cave. Uh, the only thing is, um, if uh, before, you could not access this place unless, uh, for one, Lisa has the power of the Knoll's Crystal, which you get during a story from Lisa's grandfather. Once you bear it, you will then gain access to this place. But here's the, here's the catch. This dungeon, this little cave that you go through, no humans are allowed to go through. Only monsters can go through this place. So the tricky thing is, pawn, monsters like Pondit and any other monsters you may have caught with Lisa in the past are the ones that are able to go through it. So if you're like me, you may have focused a little bit more on characters such as Elk, Lisa, Arg, and such, and less on monsters. So what I actually had to do uh, off camera, of course, before attempting to make the capturing this uh, this footage here, was I actually had to go back and try to find some pretty tough, pretty high level monsters, and possibly train some others I may have caught earlier on in the game, um, just so they'd be able. Uh, to be able to stand up to some of these monsters that you face here, which in reality isn't really that many. There's only two types of monsters, which um, I will be showing here uh, soon enough. Um, it is usually they consist of I think they're like bats and uh, some dark shaded uh, shaded monsters with the with the bladed arms. Well, you'll know what I mean soon enough. So basically how it goes like this. Get you a good party set up go, uh, together once they're, once you feel they're high enough level. Uh, one thing that I figured out that kind of sucks when it comes to having captured monsters, I there's not very many that actually have a healing spell. So if you need to do anything for healing, you're going to have to go in at least packing. I would suggest packing several uh, recovery fruits since that's going to be your only chance of healing. Unless you have a monster that can drain life, then that would be a plus. But chances are all your monsters are going to have either attack spells, techniques, or spells that were lower or raised defense, uh, uh, raised uh, stats, such as defense, attack, and so on and so forth. Um, so basically going through this, this uh, area right here, um, it's going to require uh, flipping a couple of switches. You have to go through, deal with um, a couple of rooms uh, that have mine cards. Um, and uh, as you make your way through, there's going to be times you'll have to fight these bats and these and these creatures right here. Um, if you have a pretty high, pretty good high level uh, attacker or two, that'd be really helpful. Otherwise, you could be in for a bit of a tough time. Um, the only thing that I don't like much is um, how. Uh, oh, we got a magic apple. How captured monsters, when most of them, pretty much the only thing that you can change as far as equipment on them is their weapons. That's pretty much all you can change. They're not able to equip any kind of armor whatsoever. They have to rely solely on their own stats as they gain levels. That's the only way you can get a slightly tougher tougher defense or evasion going on. So you have to keep that in mind uh, when you're trying to form a party consisting solely of monsters. I remember when um, I was trying to practice this a couple of times because I don't remember much about actually going through this cave all the way. This is one I might have ended up skipping in the end. I can't really recall since it's been so long. Um, but it can be really beneficial uh, 
uh, to to uh, any monsters that you might capture or plan to capture uh, later on. And it's not just for monsters either. Uh, it's also good for your actual human characters as well, as you'll see as we make our way through this uh, toward the end. Um, so meanwhile, going back to the fight here, um, I found uh, the monsters that I'm using uh, throughout this place. Uh, one of them you may have remember me seeing. You might have remember seeing me in an earlier video capturing from. Uh, I think it was the the mansion when we was going after Galano at the time. I don't know if it was during a story, if it was during a guild job. It could have been either or. But I have him, that Blood Fiend, who is... Okay. He's not really that high in level. I tried working with him a bit, try to get him some level ups. Um, but he's still kind of so-so. Uh, the Night Stalker, the other fiendish looking demon, uh, I caught while I was going through Lisa's story and trying to to discover what happened to Hall and its, and its inhabitants at the time. And he turned out to be pretty helpful with, uh, with its uh, strength and how it has some, uh, how it has a, a, what was it, the sleep wind? Yes, the sleep wind. Um, now, of course you know Pondin. Pondin's always been around. He's, he's awesome. He could do for a the only thing that's not I've discovered recently that's not really good about Pondin is how it may have a pretty high attack strength, but the fence is kind of lacking a bit. It he does it doesn't really have much for for hit points and um, like I said, defense could be is left to be desired. It's one of those reasons I really wish I was able to equip him with a piece of armor since. Um, Especially since, in this case, he's kind of like a really important character in the story. Um, but either way, uh, as for the other two monsters I have in my party, those I actually caught uh, going back through uh, Bonza Mountain. Uh, one of them being a... I think they're called Mud Goblins. Something like that. I called them Mud Gob. I know. I'm, I'm <laughs> really original on the name on the name making. I was having to come up with something on the spot. I was like, whatever. Because uh, I don't know how often I'm actually going to be using these guys. Um, he came at a pretty pretty high level. Uh, I think he was around the late 50s, close to 60. And the Black Skeleton that I also have. Um, I call him Black Skull. Again, I know originality. Uh, has pretty good attack strength from what I've noticed, especially once I've gone back and given him one of the strongest swords you could possibly give him at this point in the game, which is the Platinum Edge. And after upgrading that enough, uh, you can see here why he would, uh, why he's a as lethal as he is with his attacks. Uh, having speed up is also a bit of a plus, but it's not always necessary to have. I do kind of wish he had some other abilities with him, which that's another thing that we will get to when uh, we get toward the end of this. Uh, believe it or not, this is actually the um, last fight you have to endure before you get to the end. As it turns out that this this cave is not really that long. It's like three or four rooms, and then you're done. Um, I was kind. I, I, I'm kind of thankful for that because, I mean, the. Uh, you know, a simple group of monsters will only last but so long before they, their strength starts to deteriorate, and then, you know, you're going to need some massive healing, so, which is why I came here as prepared as I possibly could, and you should too. Uh, if you, for those out there that are playing this game that like to, you know, capture monsters a whole lot and use them all the time, you should feel right at home in here. It shouldn't be as bad as it. Uh, in this particular case, as it might have been kind of tough for me. So, um, but yes, feel free to go all out with whatever abilities you have in this place. Don't hold back. If you got magic apples, if you pick up some along the way, that's gravy. I know they're hard to come by, but if you had some extra ones that you need to get use some up, feel free. Try to save some for later on, of course. 
Um, let's see. We should be nearing the end of this stretch soon enough. I decided for the sake of this uh, sake of this video not to skip battles. Since it's only two battles, it's not really that bad, and they don't drag on that long. Now, the previous room I was in before actually had another encounter that you, it was like a trap encounter if you pulled the wrong switch. But we skipped that, thankfully. Okay, when you get to this point here, um, that's and that's when Lisa comes out, and that's when you know that you're done. You've made it through. The exit's just ahead. So you've made it through. You gone, and you're finally going to see Mother Claire, and she's actually becomes important. If not now, definitely, f from what I hear, she's important later on toward the end of the game. So either way, it is important that you at least meet Mother Claire at least once, as it can really be beneficial to you. But how that is, you'll have to wait and see when that time comes. So I suppose one could say a person like Mother Claire is somewhat of like a wise, a very wise uh, sage, kind of like how the spirits are that Ark visits all the time. That and the uh, the sacred, the sacred uh, tree. Um, if you recall from the first game, that you you would see uh, somewhere near Milmana. Which, by the way. Um, I believe she's. You're still able to visit her, or is it a her? I suppose it would be a, that of a female. So I'm, I'm gonna call it her. Call it her. Uh, visit that spirit uh, in this game as well. Once you're able to, that is. <clears throat> so. Uh, basically, she tries to encourage Lisa to not give up, keep a steady chin, which at this point she pretty much knows that already, that she got to fight and prevail and persevere to the very end. Okay, now, time to get down to the nitty gritty and see what, what Mother Claire can do for you. Okay, there's about three, th three things that Mother Claire can help provide for you. One of the uh, one one of the things she can do is okay talk to her again and I'll show you what uh, what it is she can help provide for you okay first off class change any monsters that you catch once you train them enough and get them into a, a suitable enough level you can actually upgrade them and change them into a stronger version of themselves you can change it to a different palette. Like, say, take a weak enemy like uh, like the Blood Fiend. Go from red and go to, uh, say, if you want to turn him to one of those uh, fiends from, say, Bonza Mountain, one of the tougher ones. You can do that. If they meet the level requirement and you have enough, what you would, what, uh, what you would call another form of currency, kind of, is Null Skill. Now, Null Skill you acquire from pretty much fighting enemies, defeating battles. That's the only way you can get it. Um, now, me personally, I'm not, I didn't really bother with it much because I didn't feel the need to. But moving on from that. Uh, adding abilities. This affects both human characters and monsters as well. Once they meet a certain level requirement, you can teach, teach each of them uh, no, a number of new spells, new abilities that become available to you. Um, I believe... You're only able to equip uh, two at a time, and you'll have to uh, ex uh, change one out if you want to change it to something different. Um, now, you can get a lot of good stuff for each of these characters, like uh, Toshu, for example. Toshu mostly specializes in only sword skills. He doesn't do much for like uh, ranging and magic, so you can take him an attack spell if you wanted to. Though I can't promise that the actual magic skill is going to be high, so it won't do much damage. Uh, lastly, monster selling. Yes, you can also sell your monster. If you feel you no longer need a monster, if he's completely useless to you, you can sell him for money. If he's uh, if he's high up in level, uh, depending on how much it's how much it's worth. Um, I'm probably not going to have that much of an issue here, but it's out there just in case you run out of room, for example, of characters, because you are limited to how many characters you can have. Um, so. 
but yeah, that's pretty much what that boils down to. I'll probably come back here off camera sometime later on and maybe teach a new ability. Right now, I'm satisfied with what I have, but this is something that you can do uh, on your own time. Uh, other than that, there's not really much you can do here. Um, another good thing, once you exit you're outside the dungeon and you're able to go to and from Mother Claire directly as you please. You only had to go through the cave once. That's it. After that, you're golden from there. So that's pretty much it guys um, for this video. That's all I just wanted to show you uh, what you can do here and how Mother Claire can help you. So I'm wrapping this up for now. Take care and I'll see you on the next video.